On the 15th of October 1988, Aquanaut returned to Turfentine for his second crack at the OK Gold Bowl. Surprisingly easy to back at 5 to 1, Aquanaut made light of top weight and short work of the opposition. South Lake and Honey Bear go up on their outside of the field, really bunching up as they come up the hill towards the home turn in the OK Gold Bowl. Round the bend now they swing through the 800 meter mark, homeward bound in the OK Gold Bowl. Midnight Melody is the leader, diving towards the inside. Down the set of the track we have Brass Bar with on the outside, Sudden Gold, Ganymede towards the inside, then Aquanaut. Behind them is Castle Walk, four lengths to find at this stage towards the inside, Borna Ruler, then comes Westridge who's come from last. They've got 500 meters left to go and it's a cavalry charge. But Aquanaut has come through to grab the lead. It's Aquanaut from Ganymede on the outside, Cincinnati. Right down on the outside, Honey Bear. Then comes Southern Gold Castle Walk getting very badly squeezed. He's terribly hampered. It's Aquanaut at the 200 meter mark of Castle Walk. It's knocked out after the race. It's Aquanaut there. Westridge along the inside, then Cincinnati. And Honey Bear on the outside, but Aquanaut has the lead. And Aquanaut is going strongly. Aquanaut two in a row. And Aquanaut won the OK. By now, a definite pattern had crept into Aquanaut's race program, and he scored his 12th career victory in the Chairman's Handicap at Kenilworth on March the 4th, 1989, setting up a new course record in the process. Then it was back to Turfentine for an unprecedented third tilt at the OK Gold Bowl, and as was the case in the previous two years, he wound up his preparation over a middle distance, this time in the computer form champion stakes over 1,800 metres. Singy boys behind those with 12 lengths to find, followed by West Ridge. Round the bend now, homeward bound in the computer form champion stakes. Sea Legs is the leader from South Lake. Roland Song closing quickly. Then we have Yardmaster on the outside. First City, Atta Rich is coming through along the inside. Cloud High is just behind them. Then we have Ray Status on the outside. Singing Boy makes his run down the centre of the track. 400 metres to go, Roland Song hits the front in the computer from Champion Stakes, Air to Riches, a big danger along the inside then, Yardmaster South Lake Singing Boy is not doing enough, then comes First City, it's going to be a two horse finish now, but Yardmaster coming up on the outside, but it's Roland Song and Air to Riches with 150 metres to go, Roland Song, Air to Riches, and on the outside, Von Speed coming late, but now Roland Song getting clear, and they go to the line, and Roland Song has won it from Yardmaster, Aquanaut Singing After Boy. running so close behind Roland Song over what was her favourite, favorite course and distance you must have been pretty confident that Aquanaut would make it three in a row yes I was very happy with that preparation run and the run brought him on a lot and uh, he was doing very well naturally Aquanaut was a firm favorite with the fans but this time victory eluded the champion makes progress along the inside castle walks down the center of the track then at Cincinnati in home style right on the outside of home style sky safari wide out we have French chime Aquanaut's right on the outside he's got 10 lengths to find with only 400 meters left to run that's Lord Fontroy along the inside the leader Vigliotto's in pursuit castle walks trying hard on the outside then at Cincinnati along the inside allied party Aquanaut's gonna have to do a bit more he is progressing now but he may be too late 200 meters to go now and it's Vigliotto is at the front Vigliotto Lord Monterey in Cincinnati Aquanaut coming gamely but he's going to be too late to do it and Vigliotto is going to win the OK goal bowl it's Vigliotto he's going well clear at the end Vigliotto Cincinnati may scrap second you must have been terribly disappointed that Aquanaut failed to complete the hat-trick we were very disappointed we believed we would win but really the horse was far too far out of his ground Mark, much of the blame for that defeat in the 1989 OK Gold Bowl was laid on Gavin Hauser's shoulders. Yes, Graham. We asked him to ride the horse as he had done in the previous two years when he won. And for some reason, he was a long way back coming into the straight. Did you give him any specific instructions to perhaps try and conserve the animal? No, not at all. He was good enough to win the race from being up handy. And uh, I wanted him up better place than that. Aquanaut quickly put the disappointment of that defeat behind him and scored possibly his most impressive career victory when ridden by Mark Kahn, he carried 60 kilograms to a runaway victory in the 2,400 meter A Bloomberg handicap at Milneton on December the 9th, 1989. Back along the outside, Allied Party trying to stay with him, but Aquanaut's got too much class for the opposition. At the 200, he's spread eagling the field. Aquanaut going on to win it very impressively. Aquanaut out in front by four. The race on behind that for the minor placings, but Aquanaut has won it like a champion. Allied Party held on for second. Mark, that was only the second time that you rode Aquanaut in a race. He won very impressively. What kind of feel did he give you in the saddle? 
Ali gave me a great feel uh, with a weight that he had. He, he simply murdered the field and, and he just pulled away at the end. And it's definitely the best I've ever ridden in my career. That victory in the A. Bloomberg handicap was his 13th and final career victory and his earnings had risen to 992,077 rand. Six weeks later, he crashed through the million rand barrier when running second in the JNB Met behind Jungle Warrior. Rising six years of age, his connections must have been tempted to send him to stud, but they decided against that move in order to have another crack at the OK Gold Bowl. And so it was that Aquanaut returned to Turfentine on the 15th of September 1990 to once again renew rivalry with Roland Song in the computer form champion stakes as his final prep for the OK Gold Bowl. In the straight day, homeward bound in the computer form champion stakes, Aquanaut comes forward to grab the lead, Roland Song second. So Valiant begins to drop away, Highland Games in a challenging position, St. Just beginning to make some ground on the outside, followed by Almanac. 400 meters to go now, Aquanaut's got to be the one to catch, Roland Song's under the whip, St. Just on the outside, then Almanac, but he can't win it, it's Aquanaut the one to catch, Roland Song beginning to wear the leader down, but St. Just looking dangerous, coming up on the outside, Von Spielate along the outside, Roland Song now gets to the front from Aquanaut on the inside, St. Just coming, but I don't think he's going to do it, it's going to be Roland Song two in a row, St. Just not going to make it on Roland Song, and Roland Song has won the computer. Mark after once again running third behind Roland Song in the computer form champion stakes over 1800 meters, you must have felt that Aquanaut was cherry ripe for the OK Gold Bowl. I thought his preparation was perfect and his run to Roland Song certainly proved that he would have had an excellent chance in the OK Gold Bowl. But it was not to be. Tragedy struck just two days prior to the running of the 1990 OK Gold Bowl. Mark, what happened? Graham, he had his final workout the Thursday before the race. He worked better than I've ever seen him work and as he was pulling up I noticed he faltered slightly and he pulled up sore behind. Um, we felt he had sprained his, his back fetlock joint in pulling up and we took him back to the stables. Uh, we had the vets there and we couldn't find anything seriously wrong except he was just a bit lame on, on his back fetlock joint. We spent the day putting him in ice packs and treating it and eventually at 9 o'clock that night the vet said to me we should leave him, let him rest, and you'd meet me there the following morning at half past seven, but I shouldn't take the bandage off or do anything. He wanted to have a look at it with me when we took the bandage off. Well, as you know, when I got there the next morning, I walked to the stable. He had been put down, and his back leg was broken right off. If you had to try and venture some form of explanation as to actually what happened through the night, what would it be? Well, Graham, when we left him and the whole day we were with him on Thursday, he was very comfortable. He was eating. He was never distressed. And all I can say is that he, he lay down to rest the leg. And when a horse gets up, they put all the weight on their back legs. And I think he probably had forgotten that his back joint was sprained. And as he was getting up, it was sore. And he either fell or, or landed on the leg. You know, that's all we can say. No one saw what happened. But that looks like probably the most obvious explanation. Mr. Mace, when did you first learn of Aquanaut's demise? On Friday morning, by phone in Cape Town. Were you actually making preparations at that stage to come to the OK Gold Bowl? Yes, I was. How did you react? I was totally shocked, devastated, and it took a long time to come to terms with this. Um, and I know I speak on behalf of all the owners uh, when I say this, that at the end of the day, what one remembers is the privilege of owning such a great horse. Speed, stamina, versatility and above all, courage are the hallmarks of any true champion thoroughbred. Throughout his career, Aquanaut displayed all these qualities. He contested 41 races, winning 13 over distances from 1,200 to 3,200 meters. He was also second in the Queen's Plate over 1,600 meters and second in the JMB Met over 2,000 meters. It is fitting that Aquanaut is buried here in the infield of the Turfentine racetrack, alongside two other famous names of the turf, Caradoc and Furious. <laughs>